بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful. The one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger. The peak of his creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran in a very striking verse. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa im minkum illa wariduha. Kana ala rabbika hatman maqdiya. Every one of you shall enter it. This is the promise, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this stage in our existence that we shall all experience and enter? According to the Holy Quran, every person on the day of judgment will pass over the fire of hell. It is a destination that we will all see. But it's a destination that we don't like to talk about. It's a stage that is very difficult for us to discuss. My dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, by the barakah of Ahlul Bayt, I have been speaking for 18 years. But tonight's topic is one of the most difficult topics for me to address. Because it is a topic that we are not comfortable hearing about especially our younger generation. We don't like to hear about this important stage in the existence of the human being, that we will all pass over the fire of hell. What is the fire of hell? How does it look like? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe it in the Quran? And how do the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam address it? It is not a topic that we're comfortable with. Anytime you bring this up, please, just talk about the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to hear that. That is our attitude. So it's a very difficult topic to address, I admit. But my dear brothers and sisters, the reality is this Quran that we have has hundreds and hundreds of verses about Nari Jahannam, about the fire of hell. I myself, I counted over 200 73 verses in the Quran that directly talk about the fire of hell. That's 5% of the Quran. Imagine how important this issue is such that your Lord dedicates 5% of the Quran to addressing the fire of hell directly. Now, when you look at indirect references to the adab and the punishment, you have much more than that. So I... As a servant of this religion, would not be honest with you if I would completely overlook that, if I would not address that. If my Lord dedicates hundreds of verses to this very important reality, at least we have to address it once in a while. I understand that constantly addressing it is difficult for many people, it might push away many people. But at least once in your lifetime, be aware of the fire of hell and the descriptions of the fire of hell. Now I know there will be some of you who will come tonight say, did you really have to talk about that? Couldn't you talk about heaven? I did Habibi last year. Last year I gave a lecture called a quick tour of heaven. And for 18 years we are talking about the rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The wonders of the creation of God. 
In 18 years, this is my only night so far where I've dedicated a full lecture on the fire of hell. So be patient. Not with me, but with the book of your Lord, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will be sharing with you the words of Allah in your Quran and the words of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. This doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not merciful. Allah is merciful. Every surah in the Quran except Surah at tawbah we start it with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah created us to have mercy on us. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِّن رَبِّكَ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ That's why Allah created us to have mercy on us. You know in the month of Ramadan how much mercy Allah gives even to the people who are in the fire of hell? The hadith states every day in the month of Ramadan, every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees one million people from the fire of hell. People who deserve to go to hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees them. How many? One million. And then on Friday, which starts Thursday evening at Maghrib, Laylatul Jum'ah, on Fridays, every hour of the day, Allah frees one million people from hell. How many do you have? That's 30 million. And you've got these four Fridays. That's almost 200 million. And then the hadith states, on the last day of the month of Ramadan, right at Eid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees as many people as he did during the entire month of Ramadan. That's 400 million people just in the month of Ramadan. Allah is merciful. He will forgive. But at the end of the day, one of the attributes of Allah is Justice, and justice must be served. There are some people in this life who produce nothing but evil, and they never care to repent. These people must be punished. Imagine the Saddams and the Hitlers and the evil criminals. It's unjust to completely forgive people like that. Justice must be served when you look at the size of the damage that they did in this dunya and how many people they affected. So yes, Allah is Rahim. And no, not all people are going to hell. We don't claim all non-Muslims are going to hell. And most people who go to hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free them. The hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi states, the one who has no faith, dharra min al-iman, not an atom's weight of faith, even on the Day of Judgment, after seeing all of those difficulties, he still disbelieves on the Day of Judgment. These people, yes, they will stay in hell forever. fiha. Or as Imam Ali السلام, states in Dua Kumail, وَأَن تُخَلِّدَ فِيهَا muanidin. The Mu'anid, the one who's really stubborn, oh Allah, this person will be in hell forever. The one who knows the truth, and he defies the truth, and on the Day of Judgment, he defies Allah. What do you do with a person like that? If you take him to heaven, it's an insult to the people of heaven to have someone so evil like that with them. That's an insult to the people of heaven. So Allah, yes, is merciful. But at the end of the day, justice must be served. Now, is there eternal punishment in hell before we take a quick, difficult tour of hell? Is there eternal punishment in hell? There are some people today who reject that. They dispute that. They say, no, there is no eternal punishment in hell. People will serve their sentence and then they'll be forgiven. All of them. No one will stay in hell for eternity. Now, what's their argument? They say that's not compatible with the justice of Allah. Because the sin that you commit in this world, as big as it is, it's limited. It's a limited sin because this whole world is limited. So how would God give you an infinite, unlimited punishment for a sin that's limited. It's not compatible with the justice of Allah. So there are some people who say no. There is no eternal punishment. When we refer to the Holy Quran, is this theory compatible with the Holy Quran? What does the Quran say about eternal punishment? The Qur'an, my dear brothers and sisters, is very clear that there is eternal punishment in the fire of hell. For instance, when you look at the Holy Qur'an, Surah Al-Baqarah 167, verse 167, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, 
Don't think that they'll ever leave the fire of hell. Now someone can say, okay, maybe that is a figure of speech. It means it's going to be a long time. What do you do with Surah Ali Imran, verse 88, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, خَالِدِينَ fiha." They are eternally in hell. لَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ The punishment will not even be reduced for them. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْظَرُونَ we have many verses in the Quran that state the, eter the punishment will be eternal. So that's not something that we can honestly deny. Now why? Why is there eternal punishment? Where is the justice of Allah? When the sin was limited, why do you get an unlimited punishment for a limited sin? For those who end up in hell and they will serve an eternal sentence in hell. There are several ways of looking at that. Number one, we have a hadith from the Imam Ali salam. He states, "Innama khullid ahlu nar." You know why the people of hell will go to hell for eternity? Because their niyyah, their intention, is that if they were to come back to this dunya and Allah would give them infinite chances every single time, they would follow the path of destruction and evil. What do you do with someone like that? You give him another chance. He'll go back to his ways. He'll kill people. He'll cause destruction in society. He defies Allah. He'll kill the prophets of Allah. He'll kill the family of the prophet. What do you do with people like that? Now you'd be wondering, is that possible? After seeing the day of judgment and the punishment and Allah sends you back, you still go back to your old ways? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in Surah Al-An'am verses 27 and 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ On the day of judgment, you shall see the evil ones standing at the fire of hell. يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا They say, we wish we'll go back to this dunya and we would not reject the prophets and reject the signs of Allah. وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ If God gives us another chance, we'll be believers. They'll say that when they see the fire of hell. But Allah in verse 28 says, no, they're lying. Now the truth has appeared. They tried to conceal it. Now they, they showed their true evil intentions. Allah says, if they were to be taken back to this dunya, they would go back to their evil ways, to their sinful lives. And they are lying. If I give them another chance, they will still ruin that chance. So this is one way of understanding why people, the very bad ones, will be in hell for eternity. Because if you give them a million chances, they will still insist on their evil. These people have to serve their sentence, their infinite sentence in the fire of hell. Now there is another reason that is more profound. We assume that the sin is limited, right? All sins are limited. There are some sins that are unlimited. Is that possible? Do you think logically it's possible in this finite dunya, in this limited dunya, to have an unlimited sin? Yes, it is possible to have an unlimited sin. I'll give you an example. Let's say Zaid, your friend, is a good person. He's a mu'min. He's trying to be a good person. And he hopes to achieve the mercy of Allah. If Zaid dies that way on the path of Iman, where does he go? He goes to heaven. How long will he stay in heaven? For eternity. Now imagine I go and I whisper to Zaid. I encourage him to deviate, do drugs, commit adultery, cut your ties with your parents, cause havoc in society, go and become a murderer, lose your faith. Imagine I encourage Zaid to become an evil person. So Zaid becomes an evil person and he dies as an evil person. Will he go to that heaven that he would have gone to if he were good? No. So Zaid, by not going to heaven, did he lose something limited or something infinite? Something infinite. By not going to heaven, he lost something infinite. 
And I caused that. I played a role in that. I caused Zayd to lose something infinite on the day of judgment, right? So the sin of misguiding him, is that limited or is that infinite? It's an infinite sin because the consequence is infinite. That is why one of the worst sins a person can commit is to misguide someone. Sometimes you misguide a person, his whole progeny will be misguided. That is an infinite sin in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the destruction is infinite. So don't look at a sin, oh, this is a limited sin. Sometimes some sins are infinite in their consequences and their effects. To give you another example, take a bullet. How long does it take to shoot a person and kill them? What, a second? You pull the trigger? Now, if you go before the judge and the judge says, we've given you a life sentence, you have to serve in prison for the rest of your life. Can you say to the judge, but judge, my sin just took a second. One second, that's all. Why are you putting me in jail for 50 years? The judge will tell you, yes, the sin itself took one second, but the destruction it caused is massive. I can't even put a number on it. Life sentence for you. You killed this person. You ruined the life of his family. He has orphans. Imagine orphans growing up. They will be impacted. They'll have children. You probably ruined the life of thousands of people. Yes, you deserve more than 50 years. The same concept applies. So it's very clear from the Quranic perspective that there is eternal punishment. We cannot really deny al-khulud fi nar because the Holy Quran is very clear about this aspect. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely merciful. But at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to take our life seriously. Allah gave us the intellect. We know right from wrong. We don't have an excuse. Yes, if a person is really ignorant or if a person repents, Allah will forgive. Anytime a person really repents, Allah forgives you. When you hear verses in the Quran about people who will dwell in hell forever and they will be punished in hell, those people never cared to repent. They didn't want to repent. They took Allah lightly. Why should I repent? They insisted on their ways until they died. These people end up in hell forever. Not those who repent. You repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. So now that we have an idea of this eternal punishment, and by the way, Islam is not the only religion that believes in eternal punishment. Christians also believe in eternal punishment according to their Bible. For instance, in the Bible you have the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 46. It states, and they will go away into eternal punishment. It's talking about the fire of hell. But the righteous will go into eternal life. Even the Bible uses language like that. That for the evildoers, their punishment will be eternal. Now let's take a quick tour, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's look at some of the features of the fire of hell as stated in the Holy Quran. As I said, this is a very difficult topic to address. And in my 18 years of speaking, this is the first time that I'm addressing this in detail like that. Because this is the Quran speaking. And the month of Ramadan is the month of reflections. Hearing these words may soften our hearts. Next time I want to oppress someone, violate someone's right, beat someone, bully someone, cheat someone, let me think of these verses. This is serious. Do you really want to risk having these verses being applied to you? Sometimes thinking about these verses keeps us in check. The first feature of the fire of hell is that on the day of judgment after everyone is resurrected and everyone is standing for their judgment, we all want to go to heaven. You have to cross hell over the bridge of Sarat to get to heaven. So everyone will be moving towards hell. Imagine, imagine billions of people moving towards the fire of hell. Because everyone's hope is to make it and go to heaven. So now imagine the scene on the day of judgment where now we're moving. The Holy Quran tells us in Surah Al-Furqan verse 25, those who reject the day of judgment, they reject the signs of God. 
we have prepared for them sa'ir, which is the burning fire of hell. Now Allah gives us a description over here. إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا When hell sees them from a distance, they hear a roaring voice to hell. They feel the rage of the fire of hell. Notice the Quran doesn't say when they see hell. It says when hell sees them. Can you imagine that description? That makes it even more frightening that hell is actually watching you, seeing you on the day of judgment from far. From far. One hadith from the Imam Ali Salam states on the day of judgment, you can see hell from a distance of one year. Imagine if it takes one year to travel to a place. Now we don't know the slight years, what type of years, we don't know. But he says from one year you can see that and you can hear the roaring sound of hell. وَإِذَا أُلْقُوا مِنْهَا مَكَانًا ضَيِّقًا مُقَرَّنِينَ دَعَوْ هُنَا لِكَثُبُورًا And then Allah states, when they will be thrown into hell, it will be in a very tight place. Hell is very big, as we shall see in some of the descriptions. But the place of the evildoers is extremely compact and tight. Such that the hadith from the Imam states, he says, have you tried putting a nail into the wall? You have to squeeze the nail into the wall. That's how they will be squeezed into their places in hell. Astajiru billah. This is Surah Furqan. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first feature is that everyone will see hell on the day of judgment. The good ones, the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the power to cross over the fire of hell with safety and security and they make their way to heaven. But imagine those who fall, those who failed their test, those who never repented, who never showed acts of goodness in their life. This is the first feature of hell. The second feature of hell is that it has seven doors and it also has seven layers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Hajj, He states, The evil ones, they have an appointment with hell on the day of judgment. It has seven doors, seven gates. Heaven, if you remember from last year's tour, how many gates does heaven have? Eight. Heaven has eight gates, but the fire of hell has seven gates. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib in one hadith tells us what these gates and layers. So there are seven layers on top of each other, there's a gate leading to each layer. Let's say if someone is supposed to go to layer five, they go from door five. The Imam Ali Salam states the lowest and the worst of them, it's called Jahannam. And that's where the munafiqeen are, the hypocrites. Then above it, you have Lava. These are the names of hell in the Holy Quran. Then the third one is Hutama. Kalla la yunbadhanna fil Hutama. Then, the fourth one is Saqar. The fifth one is, is Al-Jahim. The sixth one is Al-Sa'ir. And the seventh one is Al-Hawiya. These are the names of these layers of hell according to the Holy Quran. Now the worst of them is the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites who destroy society and destroy religion from within. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ as Allah states in the Holy Quran, the hypocrites are in the lowest, deepest part of hell. So the second feature of the fire of hell is that it has seven layers or seven doors. The third feature of hell is the food of the people of hell. Do the people of hell eat? Do they have any food? There's a hadith that states, the people of hell, out of hunger, they start crying. They start yelling. Malik is the keeper of hell, the angel who guards hell. He tells them, what's the matter with you? They said, we're hungry. He says, okay, you're hungry? Come. You know where he takes them? He takes them to Shajarat al zaqum There's a tree in hell called az zaqum They eat from that tree, and then they're given something to drink after that. Let me share with you these verses from the Holy Quran. 
Surah Al-An'am verse 6. Allah states, لَهُمْ شَرَابٌ مِّنْ حَمِيمٌ وَعَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ They will be giving the drink, a boiling water to drink. And then in Surah Ibrahim verses 15 to 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَاسْتَفْتَحُوا وَخَابَ كُلُّ جَبَّارٍ عَنِيدٍ The evil ones, they thought they'll achieve victory, but Allah gave victory to his prophets. مِنْ وَرَائِهِ جَهَنَّمُ وَيُسْقَى مِنْ مَاءٍ صَدِيدٍ On the day of judgment in Jahannam, he will be given a water of Sadid. You know what Sadid is? Sadid is blood and pus joined together, boiling that will be given to them. And the hadith states, according to the verses of the Quran, that when this boiling water will be poured on their head, it goes down to their guts, it makes their guts boil. Nastajiru billah. And the Quran states, يَتَجَرَّعُهُ وَلَا يَكَادُ يُسِيرُ He's trying to drink this boiled water, but he cannot. It's too painful, it's too difficult. وَيَأْتِيهِ الْمَوْتُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانِ And he feels as if death is surrounding him, attacking him from every direction. وَمَا هُوَ بِبَيِّتْ But in hell there's no death. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِ عَلَىٰ عَذَابٌ غَلِيظٌ And then the Quran says there's even a greater punishment after that. So indeed we see the Holy Quran giving us descriptions. Be serious with your life. Do not blow away the Akhirah just for a few days here, committing acts of evil, violating the laws of Allah. Yes, Allah is Rahim, but Allah has to also share this with us because you know what? The reality is people do not behave without the threat of punishment. If tomorrow here in Nova Scotia, the premier pulls out the police force, right? Says no police. You're all good citizens. I can trust you all. You're not going to speed. You're not going to make violations. You're not going to harm one another. Imagine if for the next year, there's no police. What do you think will happen here? I thought we're living here in Canada. People are civilized. People are educated. Believe me, if they pull the police force for one year, none of you will leave your home. You'll probably go somewhere else. Why? I thought we're good citizens. No. It's the threat of punishment that keeps most people in check, believe me. You'll get fined, you'll get jailed, you'll get... But if people are safe, no one's able to punish me, look at what people will do. So there is a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He is merciful. Allah is warning us, be good. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for you to put yourself through that. We all love to enjoy our food. Do you really want this food? Do you want this food? On the day of judgment, of course not. And then what about the clothing? The clothing of the people of hell. That's the fourth feature of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-Hajj, verses 19 to 22. Those disbelievers in hell, clothes, garments of fire will be given to them. They are wearing garments of fire. And then listen to these following verses. They are really, really effective. They're very disturbing. Allah states in the Holy Quran, some people in hell, they're trying to escape. The hadith tells us it takes them 4,900 years to try to escape. Because remember, they're going from one level to another level. 4,900 years, they're attempting to escape. Once they reach the top of hell, the angels take maqami' min hadid, as the Quran states. Iron rods. The hadith states if this rod, you know how heavy it is? If this rod would strike planet Earth, it would completely destroy the planet. They are struck on their heads. They fall back to the lowest place of hell. And it takes them 4,900 years to fall back. And this happens, this cycle happens for infinity. For an eternal amount of time. Imagine, imagine, is this worth it? Is it worth it for someone to really make violations? 
My dear brothers and sisters, I know this is a difficult conversation, but this is the book of Allah. I'm sharing with you what your creator has stated in the Quran. Allah is merciful. Allah will forgive and forgive and forgive. Just in Shah Ramadan, Allah forgives 400 million people as the hadith of the Prophet states. But at the same time, we have to be serious. Let's repent. None of us here is infallible. At least when you commit a sin, at least feel bad about it. You know what the hadith says? People who sin, they feel bad about it. Allah might accept that as their tawbah. And nadamu ala dhanbi tawbatun, as the hadith states. If you're regretful, that's a tawbah. That shows there is some goodness. But God forbid if the day comes and the human being commits a sin, and he's, and he's proud to commit the sin. He doesn't feel about it, bad, bad about it. He feels happy to commit the sin. He's not bothered by it. At that point, there's very little hope for this person. At least feel bad about the sin. At least try to fix it. You violated the rights of people. Try to give them back their rights. So these, this is the clothing of the people of hell. And one of the du'as that we recite in Shah Ramadan after du'a of Tatah, it's mustahab to recite it. It talks about the believers and how they ask Allah to protect them from the clothing of hell. وَإِذَا جَمَعْتَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْحَمْنَا Oh Allah, when you gather us on the day of judgment, have mercy on us. وَبَرَاءَةً مِنَ النَّارِ فَاكْتُبْ لَنَا Oh Allah, free us from the fire of hell. وَفِي جَهَنَّمَ فَلَا تَغُلْ لَنَا Don't chain us in the fire of hell, Ya Allah. وَفِي عَذَابِكَ وَهَوَانِكَ فَلَا تَبْتَلِنَا وَمِنَ الزَّقُومِ وَالضَّرِيعِ فَلَا تُطْعِمْنَا Oh Allah, do not feed us from that food of the fire of hell. وَمَعَ الشَّيَاطِينِ فَلَا تَجْعَلْنَا Do not put us with the shayateen and the devils in the fire of hell. وَفِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِنَا فَلَا تَكْبُبْنَا Oh Allah, don't throw us in the fire of hell on our faces. And then what does the hadith state, the dua? وَمِن ثِيَابِ النَّارِ وَسَرَابِيلِ الْقَطِرَانِ فَلَا تُلْبِسْنَا Oh Allah, protect us from the clothes of hell. The clothes made from fire. The garments made from fire. Ya Allah, you protect us from that. When you ask Allah to protect you, Allah protects you. Allah is merciful. One of the beauties of these du'as is that they soften our hearts. Believe me, if you read these du'as and you meant it, even if you have sins, you've made violations, Allah forgives. But allow your heart to repent and to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another feature of the fire of hell is that the inhabitants of hell are not allowed to speak. You know, sometimes we have the urge to talk. Not in the fire of hell. The people in hell are not allowed to speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, tells us about that in Surah Al-Mu'minun. Verses 103 to, verses, to verse 111. Allah talks about those who will fail their test on the day of judgment. Those who fail their trial, they will be in hell for eternity. They'll be frowning in hell because the fire is consuming their face. Allah will tell them, didn't I tell you? Didn't I send these messengers, the signs? You kept killing them. You kept rejecting my signs. How many chances did I give you? But you didn't listen. Then what do they say? Oh Allah, give us another chance. If we do it again, bring us back here. You know what the response will be? The response will come in the fire of hell. Be quiet. You're not allowed to speak anymore. Do not speak anymore. And this is the worst punishment for them. Because they know that they're not sincere. And Allah tells them, you're not even sincere. Even now you're not sincere. If I take you back and give you another chance, you'll still continue your evil. So this is another feature of the fire of hell. The seventh feature of the body and the skin in the fire of hell is what Allah states in Surah An-Nisa, verse 56. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those who reject our signs. سَوْفَ نُصْلِيهِمْ نَارًا what kind of fire will be waiting for them? 
كلما نضجت جلودهم بدلناهم جلودا غيرها every time their skin is burnt and cooked they will regrow another layer of skin استجيروا بالله why Allah states لِيَذُوقُ العذاب. so they taste the punishment of the sins that they committed إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزًا حكيما. Another feature of the fire of hell is that our actions are actually what creates the fire, what creates the punishment in hell. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah at tawbah verses 34 to 35, He tells us about those who make financial violations. You steal the money of the poor, of the orphan. You deny them their right. You know what Allah states? Allah states, يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ That gold that you withheld, that you stole, that gold on the day of judgment will be used to iron the body of this person, to punish this person. So it's our deeds that will translate into these types of punishments. The final feature of hell, as stated in the Holy Quran, before we mention a few hadiths, is the gatekeepers of hell. How many angels are responsible to guard hell? Does anyone know? Alayha tis'ata ashar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-Mudathir, there are 19 angels who guard the fire of hell. Malik is the main one, and he has 18 other aids. I, I'm unable to read to you the description of what they look like. But you know the size, the massive size of these angels? The distance between one shoulder to another shoulder is one year. Imagine the size of these angels. Meaning you're traveling for one year and you're going through that distance. And how the lightning comes from their eyes. These are the keepers of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them. There are 19 of them in the fire of hell. This was a brief description of the verses in the Holy Quran about the fire of hell. And we ask Allah to protect us from the fire of hell. Now a brief overview of the hadiths. One day Abu Basir, he comes to the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He tells him, oh Imam, my heart has become hard. Please tell me about the fire of hell so that my heart softens a little bit. So I take life more seriously. He asked the Imam. The Imam alayhi salam told him one day Jibra'il came to see the Prophet. Jibra'il would normally come smiling. That day, Jibra'il was frowning. The Prophet told him, Ya Jibra'il, what's the matter? Why are you frowning? What happened? He told him, Ya Rasulullah, اليوم وضعت منافخ النار. Today, the act of blowing into the fire came to an end. Now hell is ready. He told him, what do you mean? He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the fire of hell blown into for 1,000 years until it became white. Then it was blown into it another 1,000 years until it became red. And then another 1,000 years until it became black. Ya Rasulullah, now the fire of hell is dark, it's black. And then Imam Sadiq told his companion Abu Basir, Oh Abu Basir, if one drop of the food of hell comes to the planet of earth, everyone on earth will die from the stench of it. And if one chain of this chains, sab'ina dhira'an, as the Holy Quran tells us, there's 70 dhira's of chains, he says, if one of those rings, one of those chains falls on the earth, it will cause the entire planet to melt. At that point, Abu Basir said, enough, enough. You have softened my heart. Now I will be in check. And Abu Basir became one of the best companions of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And you know what, Amir al muminin no one talks about the fire of hell like Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Imam in a very powerful sermon in, in, in Nahj al-Balagha, the Imam alayhi salam tells us, look, it's not worth it. You people, you've tried your weakness in this dunya. Don't mess with the akhirah. Be serious about your akhirah. So this is what Amir al muminin states. Listen to the words of your Imam. The Imam alayhi salam states, وَعْلَمُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ 
أنه ليس لهذا الجلد الرقيق صبر على النار Oh servants of Allah know that this very tender skin doesn't have the patience for the fire of hell وَعَلَمُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ لِهَذَا الْجِلْدِ الرَّقِيقِ صَبْرٌ عَلَى النَّارِ فَارْحَمُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ فَقَدْ جَرَّبْتُمُوهَا عَلَى مَكَارِهِ الدُّنْيَا Have mercy on yourselves. You've seen the weakness of your body. أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ جَزَعَ أَحَدِكُمْ مِنَ الشَّوْكَةِ تُصِيبُوهُ ومن الرمضاء تحرقه ومن العثرة تدمي. The Imam says you've seen how you lose patience, how it's painful when one thorn goes into your body, when you trip, you fall and you hurt yourself, or when you walk on the hot sand barefoot. The Imam says you've seen how weak you are. فكيف إذا كان بين طابقين من نار. The Imam says, then imagine if you are between layers and layers of fire. On one hand, there's a rock that's boiling under you. And on the other hand, there's a shaitan who's hugging you. Imagine that. The partners of the people of hell are the shayateen, the evil devils. These are the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi alayhi, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's take these words of advice to our hearts. But there is hope. There is a lot more in the hadith. There is a lot more that we have in our hadiths. But inshallah, this suffices to awaken our hearts. But remember, Allah is Rahim. Allah is so merciful on the Day of Judgment. Even Iblis will have hope. Allah might forgive me on this day. Even Iblis. And there is one beautiful hadith that states there are a group of people in hell on the Day of Judgment. After a while, they say, Oh Allah, we ask you in the name of your Prophet Muhammad and Ali and Hassan and Hussein to forgive us. Allah says, Jibra'il, Jibra'il, go and save them. He says, Ya Allah, you want me to enter hell? How? Allah says, I'll protect you. I'll tell the fire to be peace and cold for you. Jibra'il goes to them. He lifts them and he brings them to the Rahmah of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, Had you earlier humbled your hearts, and called on me and Muhammad wa Ali wa Hassan wa Hussein, I would have forgiven you. Our hope is in the shafa'ah of Ahl al-Bayt. Our hope is in the shafa'ah of good ones. My dear brothers and sisters, Qara al-Quran, the one who reads the Quran and carries the Quran in his heart, the hadith states, he can do shafa'ah for 10 people who have to go to hell. Wajabat alayhim Allah tells you on the Day of Judgment, go save 10 people, whoever you want. A believer, a mu'min has the power of shafa'a. A child who dies young, they will do shafa'a for their parents. Good parents can do shafa'a for some of their children. Allah has given us the room, but it's not worth it, my dear brothers and sisters, for us to put ourselves through that difficulty. Because suddenly someone can lose iman, can lose faith. Even, I will conclude with this hadith, even the one, on the day of judgment, who doesn't really have that much faith, but claims to have it, Allah will forgive him. Listen to this hadith. The hadith states, on the day of judgment, a person is ordered to be dragged into the fire of hell. The angels are dragging this person. Yes, the Holy Quran talks about them. From their feet, they will be dragged. From their foreheads, they will be dragged. The person is being taken towards the fire of hell. Before being pushed into hell, he looks back. Yaltafit. He looks back. The command comes from Allah. Why did you look back? My slave, why did you look back? He said, oh Allah, I didn't think you would punish me. I see you in a good state. You're Rahman, you're Rahim. I never thought that you'd actually punish me. You know what Allah says to the angels? Allah says to the angels, I swear by my glory, he's lying. Not one day in his life did he ask me by my mercy. Not one day in his life did he see me positively. 
But now that he's saying it, it's okay. Let it fly. Let it fly. Allah is Arham al Rahimin, my dear brothers and sisters. But we also have to be serious with our life, serious with the day of judgment. And every day ask Allah to protect you. Allah will protect you. Allah will protect your families, your societies. Allah is Rahim. Allah will forgive most people. Even, even non Muslims, there are some Muslims who are under the impression that all non Muslims are going to hell. That's not true. All non Muslims will be punished. That's not true. Look at the hadiths that we have from Ahlul Bayt. The hadith from the Imam states there was a man from Bani Israel. He was a kafir. No faith, no belief. But he had a neighbor who was, Mus who was a believer, was on the path of the prophets at the time of Bani Israel. So this disbeliever would do acts of kindness to the believer. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive that disbeliever. And he tells him, you know why I'm forgiving you? He says, why? He says, because you were kind to my believer. Because you were kind to him, I'm not going to let the fire of hell burn you. Those who have goodness in their heart and their lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive them. So my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for your patience with this discussion. As I said, it's a very difficult discussion. It's the only time in my 18 years of speaking that I addressed it in detail like this. But I felt it is my responsibility. And last year, after I gave the lecture on the tour of heaven, some people did ask me, Sayyid, why didn't you give us a tour of hell? I said, okay, we'll discuss it next year, inshallah. But by taking a quick tour of the fire of hell, at least we know what to expect on the day of judgment, so we're prepared right now. So right now, we keep ourselves in check, my dear brothers and sisters. And we ask for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask for the mercy of Allah. And by the way, it's recommended for you as believers to directly talk to hell. The hadith states there are four things that directly hear you. One of them is heaven. Oh Allah, grant me heaven. Immediately heaven will say to Allah, Oh Allah, your servant asked you for me, for heaven. So please bring him to me. Heaven will hear you when you pray and supplicate. The second one is the fire of hell. The fire of hell will hear a mu'min when he says, Oh Allah, protect me from the fire of hell. Hell will say to Allah, Ya Allah, protect this person from coming into me. And some of the other categories is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Anytime you say, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah, directly Allah conveys your voice to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And we ask Allah on this evening to make our biggest shafi' the grand intercessor, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi.